Welcome to Principal's Perspective with Mr. Barry Spencer, the principal of the Norristown Area High School. To introduce today's program is Mr. Jim Nelson, English teacher at Norristown Area High School. Thank you very much, Amy. Recently, my world of writing uh, class had to complete a unit on persuasive writing. One of the assignments that they was, were asked to do was to either write a letter to the high school principal, the superintendent of the school district, or the school board president. As coincidence would have it, just around the time that the assignment was made, Mr. Spencer came over the airway speaking to the student of body about his expectations. At that point, many students decided that they wanted to write letters to Mr. Spencer reacting to the principal's comments. He received these letters last week, and when we talked together, we decided that a show like this was a possibility. Today, three students on my left, Alicia Marion, Vanita Hill, and Heather DeRussi, will be the first ones to get a chance to ask questions in a question and answer format. Uh, Mr. Spencer will open with a few comments, and then we will turn it immediately over to the questions. Mr. Spencer. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. I'd like to welcome you and the entire world of writing class to today's uh, program. In the past several months, we've talked about various communications devices and techniques, and one of the ideas was to begin a, a program such as student perspectives or my perspectives. So in this particular case, we're going to start out and try some principal's perspectives. With us today in the, the world of writing class, Mr. Nelson's class, as he just described, you have uh, 18 students who basically chose to write a persuasive letter uh, to the people that he named. Uh, for my benefit, 15 of the people chose something that had to do with school policy or my statement on uh, the 16th of February. In particular, one student wrote about a program we had last year and its effect on transcripts. Another two students wrote about the dress code and a, the remaining 12 students out of the 15 that wrote to me wrote a, in terms of a reaction and a uh, little persuasion in my direction about uh, comments, my comments on February 16th. Just to update the audience and remind the class and anyone else who might not have uh, heard the program on Eagle News that day, I followed a faculty meeting where I told the faculty members that we needed more to have higher academic achievement and better attendance for all students in the school. I suggested that time to the faculty, actually I insisted, demand, I was very emphatic obviously, that uh, they should begin to push as hard as they could uh, students so that as much achievement and action on students' part uh, should be taken as necessary to get better grades and prepare themselves more for the future. Now I specifically talked about a number of things with the faculty and then the next day on Eagle News with the student body. Specifically, I indicated there should be homework every night and the teachers should be checking it and grading it uh, when it was due. If it wasn't completed, there were to be students should receive a detention with the teacher so that the work could be done and help could be given from the teacher to the student after school. There should be daily class participation. The teacher should try to get that from every student rather than just standing and lecturing or giving written assignments. There should be more quizzes and tests, <coughs> excuse me, so that uh, students had a better opportunity to have a better grade and more opportunities to do that. When the grade average was below 70%, I also suggested that, I demanded that, or I insisted that, or I directed that, uh, the teachers should be giving the students a detention and giving them opportunities to uh, do a little better or improve their grade after school or learn the material that they may not have learned. And I also suggested that if the students still weren't failing by the end of the fourth marks period, or weren't passing at the end of the fourth marks period, excuse me, uh, and they were below 70%, which could be a D or a failing grade, that uh, the teacher should work with the student and parent to determine a plan for success in the future. Now, what I was driving at was, and what I said very emphatically was, we didn't want anyone failing by the end of the marks period. The other focus of my comments related to attendance in that our attendance uh, has, has continued to decline over the last three or four years after some very positive results and a lot of efforts that uh, the faculty and the parents made for the previous seven or eight years. We went from about 14% absentee rate down to about 7 to 8% as of about 1990. And since 1990 through this year, we were a little, little bit shaken. We started when I got results from the computer for the daily attendance 
and found out that the rate had climbed to approximately 12 percent. I was even more startled when I looked at some of the records of students back to middle school and found out that many of the students who were not achieving at a real high level and not getting a lot of, uh, getting a lot of failing grades, let me put it that way, have now, now have records of not coming to school for quite a bit of time. So I then looked and tried to pick a figure. So I arbitrarily picked 10 percent of the days. 10 percent of the days gave me some startling statistics which I uh, related and those statistics are as follows. 37 percent of the ninth graders have been absent 10 percent or more of the days. 39 percent of the 10th graders, 32 percent of the 11th graders, and 46 percent of the 12th graders. Unfortunately, 11th and 12th graders historically have had, uh, as they've gotten more freedom, automobiles, jobs, etc., have uh, normally been known to be true in a few days. Not that I condone that. The scary part to me was that we have approximately 30 percent or more of our students showing a really bad attendance record coming up from the middle school years and going into high school, which is really scary for the future because those same students, for the most part, not 100 percent, but for the most part, I would say the majority of those students, uh, their grades are consistent with their attendance rate, which means they're, they're low and in many cases not passing. There is the exceptional student who, despite absenteeism, is able to uh, successfully meet, talk with teachers, read, and do exceedingly well. That's a very small minority for the students that I've dealt with in the last 25 years. Anyway, at this point in time, we'd like to have an open discussion for the remainder of the program between the students in the audience and Mr. Nelson, if he wishes to join in. And I will try to answer as honestly and clearly as possible, maybe not the correct the answer that you want to hear, but I may not hear the questions that I want to hear either. So uh, at this point, uh, we'd like to start out, I think, with the first question. And I would just like one last point. I would like to remind everyone that I did say on the Eagle News that I'm very pleased with a number, a, a select number of students, three that I mentioned by name, and about 50% of our student body is doing very well. Our college-bound rate has consistently been for the last four or five years while this decline has taken place at about 65 to 75 percent, although that's not everything. You have to be prepared for the future. And first question. Mr. Spencer, the first question I would like to ask you is, when will seniors be graduating? Officially, I'll probably be making an uh, announcement next Tuesday. The expectation at this point, even though I wanted to try to keep it the same date it was and try to get an exception from the state, it does not look at this point like that's possible. The board uh, from the superintendent of schools last night uh, took another look at the calendar, a second or third revision, and the, the new calendar proposes that the last student day is the 24th and that graduation is the 23rd, which is uh, about a week and two days after when we originally planned. That, of course, would necessitate probably some exceptions to a number of students who we've already spoken to everyone in the world about in the administration and the board in terms of going on to college programs, some military commitments, and a variety of other things. So uh, there's going to have to be an opportunity for some exceptions for students in the last week or so of school. Uh, hopefully everyone will be able to make it back for graduation, which is a big thing in everyone's life. Another question. Stay over here on Mr. The Spencer, um, last year I was involved in the Eagle Academy program and I know that a lot of the people in that did not do very well at all. A lot of us are still listed as freshmen. Um, our credit's short. What do you, is there any possible way that you could help us out as if we want to further our education? Um, so far as our records when we want to go to college that just to enclose some kind of notification that we are, that we were in an, a special program, it was a experiment, a experimental program? Uh, yes, I, I, read, I read all of your letters, the 15 of you that wrote to me, and I, I read your letter and I agree 100 percent. I would, uh, the, the, some of the results of some of the teams that we tried last year, which have long-reaching effects to try to make a dent on some of the problems that I just mentioned, and I mentioned a month ago with the faculty and students that I just reiterated, uh, many of those concerns can be addressed by some of the team approaches and some of the accelerated approaches that, that we've talked about as a faculty and with some of the community members. However, we started the program last year and sometimes timing isn't exactly appropriate, similar to uh, many of you addressing me because of the timing of, the, of your writing assignment and my announcement. The timing of the starting of, of a variety of new programs that affected about a third of the student population last year 
uh, with new, some new innovative programs and groupings of students, uh, ran into difficulties, one of which was the fact that we had a job action and many of the things that were said and directed to you that you mentioned in your letter, uh, many of those things were not followed through on and not completed. My recollection is uh, from looking at, at Eagle Academy last year and the results at the end of the year, about half of the students seemed to do very, very well uh, with many A's and, and uh, you know, top grades. Other students had difficulty in one or more courses and, and obviously you know and probably everybody in the audience knows that if you fail two courses in ninth grade that basically would mean that you would not be considered a tenth grader for the next year unless you completed the work in summer school. What you ask for, as I recall, is that uh, we attach something in the transcripts for those students explaining the program and uh, trying to explain what the purpose was and what happened. And I would agree with that and, and uh, hopefully maybe you can make an appointment with me and we'll sit down and try to draft the letter and I'll pass it on to the guidance counselors and other administrators to, to take a look at. Or if you want to, you can talk to some of the other students and maybe meet with me. Okay? okay? I think it's a very good point. And uh, the last thing we want to do is for programs that we take time to prepare and uh, put together, uh, we don't want them to you know, fail. And unfortunately, uh, programs fail and it's not just individual students who don't come to school and so on. All that is reflective of what happens here at school and, and the follow-up and that's also a big part of the problem. Okay, next question. Before we go back to the audience, Heather, I think you wanted to... Well, judging by the reactions of the teachers, it would appear to me that you have minimal communication with the teachers on a one-to-one -one basis, and judging by the reactions of the students, it would appear to me that you have very little communication with individual students as well. And my question is, how can you expect to form policies about a school where you do not personally know enough of the people to actually form these policies? Good question. Okay, you're, you're right in there and you're uh, talking with the students and you're talking with other members of your classes, you're talking with faculty members and you're reacting to my comments to them and to the student body. The information that I said I expect of students, the information I said that I directed teachers to do, uh, was a result of a number of communications and meetings that were held a number of years ago. It seemed like... I'm, trying to give you a little background, because you may be right. My, my approach and the, the words that I chose to use, and I did choose, choose to use them rather than request and think about and things that I've done and said in the past, were directed at getting a reaction and hopefully making everyone aware of what uh, was going on. That was part of what I want to do. The other part of what I want to do is hopefully move, the direct, move in a positive direction. Uh, I am open for criticism, as I've gotten from members of this group and also uh, faculty members and some other people outside. I've had numerous discussions with many people in the school and beyond the school in the past month now, as you can imagine. That was part of what I wanted. I wanted them to recognize the problem. I wanted them to recognize and not ignore the fact that we were, were looking at a situation of declining attendance rates and deteriorating grades. The solution to the problem long term is what you're suggesting. There is no way that I personally can direct you to do what has to be. I can't tell you, you must be in school tomorrow. I, you know, I can't go out and pick individuals and say, why didn't you get a B in that test? You know, it's, it's a difficult thing to do, and I don't even suppose, or I don't even pretend, I never have tried to, that uh, I have control over all of your lives. What I am trying to do is, if I might, I was trying to make an immediate impression, good or bad, that certain things are expected. The tough line is, this is your job, this is your life, even though you may not want to hear this as, as 15, 16, 17, 18, in some cases 19 year olds at this point. This is the most important thing that I can tell you that will impact on your future. Even almost at this point beyond uh, the things that have happened in the past, although that is the broad basis for where you're going in the rest of your lives. Right now it is important, no matter what else or what other problems you have, we have people here that can try to help you or can try to find other assistance for you. But the important thing is for you to get here and interact with the faculty members such as Mr. Nelson on a regular basis. And the ones that do that, by and large, 
are very successful in school. Not only are they successful in school, but the ones that have difficulty learning, if they are willing to, or if I can try to force or get teachers to initiate the detentions or the extra help sessions for the, for the students, those students also will be successful. One of the things that I said to the faculty and I tried to convey to parents and, and to you is that I believe that all of you can learn. And I'm not concerned whether you have a disability for special ed students or not, because I still believe you can learn given the right circumstances. I also believe the teachers have to believe what I just said. And if they don't, we have some big problems, which were addressed in some of your other notes about teachers and this teacher versus that teacher and some things that were brought to, attend to the attention. Your question, Heather, is, is very specific. One, what I, one of the things that I am trying to do already is I'm trying to work on with a group of students, faculty members, and parents, a total group of only 10, right now to gather data from everybody, from all of you. All the students are going to have an opportunity to actually give some input on the grading structure, the marks periods, and, and other open items before the next marks period is over. The parents will also receive something similar to that, but perhaps a different format in the, with the report cards. And the teachers are going to, have, going to uh, be given and hopefully will, will take a very positive thrust toward what we have. The fact is our faculty, more than anyone, has determined what the present practices are in the policies. And there was a great deal of input. And what I really tried to bring out on February 16th and 15th was that, hey, we're getting away from things that work here. And I want you to do them for the faculty. And students, I wanted you to know that I told the faculty that and what was therefore expected of you so that you weren't in trouble with the teachers. And also wanted to make sure that for the teachers that were, would, uh, try to avoid what I was doing, which is, which is uh, part of your issue if I'm not working with, each, with the teachers and they're not in agreement. It's really hard to get where I want to go, which is right. Um, I wanted you to hear from me so that no teacher could, could just ignore the situation come in the class and just say, like, oh, well, forget it. Although some probably have tried anyway. Okay? I didn't exactly address your question, but I addressed it broadly. Other questions? Yes? My name is Nikolia, and um, I agree with you that everyone have a right to learn, but only if the teacher is able to teach. And another thing is, um, I want to know if there's a rumor about um, us having to go to school on Saturdays. I disagree with the part only the teachers can teach. No, I said everybody have um, is able to learn, but only if the teacher is able to teach. I agree. Um, and part of that, I think, is, is what I was just trying to say. Um, sometimes the, the teachers can, can do almost anything with any student. I'm choking myself here, excuse me. Uh, if they believe that the students can learn or that they can make a difference. Every student doesn't come to school here or any other school in the United States or probably around the world and want to learn because, because we say you have to come to school. I mean, we said sometime in the past uh, 50 years, somewhere back in the 40s, this Pennsylvania state law, the present law was written and said that all students up to age 16 have to come to school and at 16 if they get uh, their permission from their parents to have a full-time job, they can leave. And if they uh, are 17 and the parent signs off, they can leave. And if they're 18, they can leave if they want to before they graduate. Uh, that's what the law says. Most people today could care less what the law says, whether they're adults or students. And uh, I guess the bottom line is that the teachers take the deepest interest in you as the students and spend the time, perhaps like a Mr. Nelson does, who I think you all recognize, you elected this course and you took it because you've known for the last several years other people have had Mr. Nelson's class, that's probably why, you, or you had Mr. Nelson in another class, and that's why you took the course. If they're like Mr. Nelson, who does basically the things I was telling the teachers to do, is that fair? How many people feel Mr. Nelson does most of the things I was talking about? Just give me a, give me a hand signal. I don't care if they get this on tape or not. Yeah, the vast majority of you agree. Some of you probably think Mr. Nelson's out of it too, but that's like me. But anyway, uh, I agree with your statement, okay, in terms of the reference to the teachers. Your second, go ahead, go ahead. I wanted to say about ISS, some of the um, teachers that be in ISS get carried away because I understand that um, you 
can't fall asleep and get to work at all times, but they just take it as though you fall asleep or something like that. You get suspended, and that's not helping one bit with doing your work because if I'm still in the still in the class. Okay, let's do ISS next. What was your second question? You made me forget it now. You said something else before you got... The, the rumor about Saturdays. Rumor about Saturdays, yes. Real, real quick answer. The state legislature or someone today, I heard on the radio this morning, was, we're going to offer two options. It's getting later and later, and our school board can still change their minds about graduation and so on. Nobody wants to go to school until the last week in June, which is where we are. We're through the, the 24th right now, and for seniors, the 23rd, which was the date that you know, we decided that we could justify in terms of uh, graduation. So there'll be days, you have half days and so on up through then for seniors. But um, the leg legislature right now is apparently, on the radio I heard today, looking at the possibility of passing something allowing us to have school on Saturdays or now changing and saying if you count more, if you do more hours, then we'll give you hours above, I guess it's 990 for secondary schools in Pennsylvania. If you do more than that, then they'll give you credit for your 180 days or give you credit, I guess, for every, I don't know, six hours a day or some, whatever number they pick, we'll give you credit for another day. But that's like some of the other discussions. Back several weeks ago, they were talking about because of the bad weather, maybe they would forgive us the 180 day rule. So, you know, all that's just speculation at this point. Okay? As far as I know, there's no, uh, there's no decision as far as that, that goes. In school suspension. In school suspension, we tried to uh, we tried to make it as tough as possible so that every student that was there was working and and taking the benefit of staying in school rather than being out of school. All right, that was something that we decided to do years ago, and we've had everything. Quite frankly, we've had everything from in school suspension 20 years ago being a room up on the third floor when we first got here, where the students talked and fooled around all day compared to probably now being the most controlled situation where students are actually, and I was in there on Friday afternoon as a matter of fact for a while watching what was going on uh, and observing what Mr. Shout was doing, who's the teacher this year. Uh, what I observed was nine students working the whole period, some of them periodically coming down and going to Mr. Shout getting their work checked or asking questions and going back and then I said a few things to some, some of the different people in there. That's really what I prefer for in-school suspension, the most beneficial to everyone. I think some of the concerns that you just expressed and other people have is that they've done a minor problem or they've had a minor problem such as, uh, I don't know, any minor problem and they got assigned in-school suspension. As soon as they then violate another rule or as soon as they um, don't do what they're supposed to do on in-school suspension, they get sent back to Mr. Fabrizio and put on out-of-school suspension. I guess I'm responsible for that more than anybody. Mr. Fabrizio and Mr. Shout are responsible to enforce it, but we basically, uh, you know, in talking with the faculty members over the years, want the most structured situation possible in school suspension for two reasons. So it's productive for the students and also so that students don't want to go back to in school suspension. Now, I agree with you. It's detrimental to put everybody out of school. That's the only reason we start in school suspension 20 some years ago. So somewhere in between, we have to try to uh, come to a meeting which is best for all students. Okay, I think we might have time for one more question. Let me try to, yes. I have a question about the dress code. Can you explain why we're not allowed to wear hats and shorts? Yes, uh, hats and shorts. Basically, again, with faculty and parent and student input, many years ago up through the, the last decade, uh, people have taken this approach. You should be dressed and prepared for what you're going to do in the business world after you leave school, especially in high school. I have stuck with that virtually 100%, uh, but you should know, and the, all, of you, all of you in this room right now realize that we did have a trial last year where we did shorts for a month or so. It went very well. We had four or five problems over that whole period of time. We had some problems right after that because some students then sort of refused to go back and not wear them and we had just worked our way through that. I promised that we would continue that and, and continue on with uh, another trial this year and we're planning to do that. I would say at this point, um, the shorts issue, we are going to do that probably sometime in April through the end of the year. That's what we're planning to do because the reality is our society has changed. 
Another thing that changed is wearing hats. I wear hats. Somebody, somebody, I forget who at this point, but someone made comments about me and, and having a bad hair day. I looked at that note and I said, man, that's really getting personal now. That's not like saying I'm not a good principal or whatever. They're saying, they're, they're actually criticizing my baldness because I'm getting bald, obviously. But uh, trying not to joke for a second, the hat issue is still really not accepted, although there are different types of apparel wearing, in, worn in most business jobs uh, around uh, you know, the world, I guess. It's far beyond the United States. Now, I, I think we're pretty much out of time, unfortunately, and if you would like, I'd be happy to come back to class and try to deal with more detail on this, because a lot of you had questions which we didn't really address fully. But um, I think we're going to have to call close at this point, because we are trying to work within this class period today with your World of Writing class. And again, I want to thank all of you, and Mr. Nelson, I thank you, and hopefully this has been beneficial, not only for the informational sake, but also the discussion and the opportunity to be in front of the TV cameras. I'd like to uh, thank all of you for watching Principal's Perspective. I'm Barry Spencer. Please stay tuned to the North Area School District TV Channel 3 for future school-related telecasts.